does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to be checking out Dig Down Dwarf from Grey Gnome Games. This is for two to five players. Age is 10 and up, and it'll take about 15 minutes to play. And in Dig Down Dwarf, you are going to be chucking dice, taking control of a dwarf, trying to gain the most gems, but at the same time deciding, do I want to hold on to my gems for delicious victory points, or do I want to cash them in to get super awesome abilities? Sound intriguing? Let's open it up and see how it works. Alright, and we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Dig Down Dwarf on our handy dandy grip mat, which turns every game into a space game. So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule sheet. It is, I'd say, about uh, I don't know, eight, four pages, double-sided, full color. Uh, very well done. Um, we'll have you up and running in no time. It's a very simple game, and this definitely isn't going to leave you with any questions that are unanswered, I don't think. Uh, so... In this game, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be chucking dice, collecting gems, and saving those gems up to give you victory points, or potentially spending the gems in order to get super unique powers. How does that all work? We'll go over the components, then we'll go in a little bit into the gameplay. So first thing you're going to get is you're going to get this little drawstring bag. As you can see, it's very nicely done. It's going to be holding all of your gems. And as you can see, we take a look at all the gems. There's all sorts of different colors of gems, and they're all going to have different unique special abilities, which we'll get to in a little bit. You're going to get this big gem, which as you can see is uh, pretty large. i got pretty decent sized hands. That's just going to represent who the first player is. You are going to get the five standard D6 dice. Nothing special about these dice. They're just your regular average dice, but they're all in different colors, and that will impact how the game is played. And then you are going to get your player cards, and there's going to be a bunch of them. The only unique things about these player cards are uh, what kind of set you're going to try and collect in order to gain bonus points, because these will gain you bonus points at the end of the game. And uh, what color is going to help you unlock your special abilities, which would be these numbers right up here. The green, the red, the blue, so on and so forth. So in this game, what you're going to be doing is, well, you're going to be trying to collect gems. How you're going to be doing that is by trying to get certain, uh, I guess you'd call them poker hands. So we'll put them all back into the bag, and we'll take a look at the different gems that are included in the game. So there are going to be seven gems in the game. We'll start at the top. There's only one diamond. There's only one up there, but it's going to be worth 12 victory points if you choose not to spend the gem. Because once you are able to collect gems, and we'll get a little bit into how to collect gems in a couple minutes, uh, you either can either keep them and get victory points at the end of the game, or you can spend them and use their special ability. So for instance, if you have the one diamond, you can spend it to take any group of gems from the table. So let's just pretend that say there's, oh there we go, there's a good example. Let's say there are four blue gems on the table right there. You might say, wow, four blue gems. You know what? That's going to be worth 16 points if I trade in my diamond. So yeah, you might actually do that. You might say, alright, I'm going to spend my diamond that you would have in front of you, and you would get it to get those gems. Uh, next is the star gem. There's two of them in the game, and that's going to be worth eight victory points at the end. Uh, and if you spend the yellow gem, which uh, I believe that is right here, even though they don't look too yellow, they're kind of orange, uh, you are going to get an additional die. So as you can see, we have five die over here. Normally, you're only going to roll four. Everybody's only going to roll four. However, if you spend a star gem, you're going to get an additional six die, which is going to make collecting more gems really easy. So if you can get that yellow gem right at the beginning, that can be very, very helpful. Moving on down the list, we have four emeralds right here. Those are worth six victory points. And you're going to be able to spend to set any one die of your side during a choice of your turn. So essentially, that's going to let you, if you spend it, gonna just going to make one of these into a wild, and you can change it to any number you want. Now before we continue to go down, I forgot to mention, how do you get these gems? Well, you might have to roll four ones, or four of a kind, two pairs, a straight, three of a kind, single pair, so on and so forth. So they're going to have different special abilities. I want to get down here, down here, uh, to the curse site. There's going to be ten of these, and these are actually going to be negative one point for each one you have, but there's ten of them. There's quite a lot, as you can see. Uh, the only way you don't score negative points with those are if you collect all ten in a two-player game, or nine of them in a three-player game, or eight, or seven, so on and so forth. But that's going to be very hard to do and score those points, but, you know, it's, it's something worth trying to do. There's other special gems. We're not going to go into all of them. Let's get into the gameplay so you can see exactly how the game is played. 
So when you first start the game, you're going to collect uh, one of your characters, which will go like this, and then you're going to collect another card over here so you can remember what all the different gems do. And then when you first start the game, you're going to take four gems out of the bag randomly, and wow, that's a really powerful one. So these are the four gems that you're going to be able to try and get. You've got the diamond out there, which is going to need four ones, which is going to be really hard to get. Uh, you can have a straight, so two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. You can have the red gem, which you're going to need to call at the beginning before you start rolling that you're going to get three of a kind. Or we have our star gem, which is four of a kind, which will give you that extra die. Uh, so on your turn, what you're going to do, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab two additional ones out of the bag. So you're going to start with four on the board, and then you're going to grab two randomly out of the bag like so. And then you're going to try, this is how we normally do it, we normally try and pile them up. So now, what you're going to try and roll for are any of these. This one is the curse height, so you don't want to do that, because if you end with a single pair which is right down there, you have to take the curse side if that's the only thing you can take. So that's something you don't want to try and do. So this turn, uh, it might be worth trying to go for the three of a kind, or you might be trying to get the four of a kind, because if you can get that extra die at the beginning, that could be very powerful. But anywho, getting ahead of myself, what you're going to do is you're going just to roll four dice, not the yellow dice. You're going to be rolling these four dice right here, and we'll just go ahead and do that. Now, if you've ever played King of Tokyo or Yahtzee or, or a game similar to that, you're going to get three rolls to do things. So let's take a look at what we got. We got a one, a two, a three, and a six. Now, two of these numbers have special abilities, which we'll get into right now. If you ever roll a one, you have to keep the one. You can't re-roll that. So let's just set that right there. We are stuck with that one. Also, if you roll a six of any color, you have the ability to re-roll that for free. So if we weren't happy with that six, we might say, eh, you know what, we'll, we'll just re-roll that, and uh, yeah, we will re-roll it. Uh, because I don't think we called three of a kind, so we'll just go ahead and re-roll that, and if we were to get a four, we'd had a straight. So, now, you get to re-roll once again, everything except for your one, and you get to decide what you're going to re-roll, so we'll say, uh, you know what, we're going to try and go for that diamond or one of these, so we're just going to re-roll these three again. Re-roll it again, and whoa, that's really good. We have three ones already, so we are guaranteed to at least get, uh, oh, no, we're not guaranteed to get anything. We still need to get that fourth one. Now, one thing I want to mention here, and I have not talked about here, are the wilds. So, for instance, if this ever happens where you roll a green six for this character, or a blue six for this character, you are going to rotate your card one spot. You'd go like this, boom. Uh, and the first time you roll a green six, you are going to be able to use a wild die. So let's just pretend uh, that this, this is the scenario that happened. That this is what happened, and I've got, well, I've got a green six here. Well, uh, since I am going to be able to turn this into a wild die, I can go ahead and I can make this a one, and I could collect either the, the, the diamond or the yellow gem, and you could argue about which one is going to be more helpful at this point. Uh, but that's going to give you a wild. Now, the next time that I roll a green six, and you can only roll, roll one green six per turn, you're going to rotate your card once again. So last time, I had the option to only have a wild die. Now I'm going to have the option to either do a wild die, one wild die, so make one of my dice wild, or draw one random bag from this. Now you're saying, but you could get a negative. Yeah, you could get a negative, or you could get a, uh, you could get a red, you could get a yellow, you could get the last, di well, the one diamond. So it's a high risk, high reward kind of thing when you draw it. The next time you get a green six, when you roll another one, you're going to gain another special ability. So you'll either be able to have one wild die, or draw one gem from the bag, or swap one of your gems with another player's gem. The only thing you can't take, obviously, is the diamond, because that'd be a huge point swing. But essentially, if you had one of these guys, you could give it to somebody else and take, you know, a red or a blue or a yellow or, a, or any other gem that they have that's not a diamond. So that's really helpful. Last but not least is the raid ability. And this one is going to be really difficult to get, because you're going to need to roll four green sixes. But if you can raid, you may take one gem from the center of the table. Any gem you want. Uh, so if there's a really good gem out there, like the diamond, for instance, which I think you can do with the rate ability, you can say, you know what, I'm just going to take that diamond right there. So it is a pretty big special ability, and everyone is going to be working on this, rotating their cards, trying to gain their different special abilities. But anywho, at the beginning of everybody's turn, they're going to be drawing two diamonds out of the bag, rolling their four, or if they have the yellow gem and they spend it, five potentially dice, trying to get the different hands, trying to collect as many gems as they can, and also 
trying to get their sets because that's going to gain you bonus points at the end. So if I have two green gems in my possession, I don't spend them at the end, I'm going to get uh, some bonus points. And everyone else is going to have different sets of bonus points that they can go for. Uh, trying to collect your certain gems for your sets and get bonus points and trying to get the most points Once you get down to no gems in the bag Everyone's gonna get one more turn and then the game will be over You'll tally up your gems and your bonuses and you will see who has the most points and that person who has the most points will be the winner of Dig Down Dwarf and that in a nutshell is how the game is played Ogre Dokery, Dig Down Dwarf from Grey Gnome Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, the game's not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. It plays 2 to 5, so if you want to play a bigger game group, might not be for you. Also, it is a dice game, so there's going to be a lot of luck on this. What what uh, what gems you draw from the bag is going to matter. How you roll the dice, when ones pop up, when you have to take those stupid pink gems that give you negative points is going to pop up. If your opponents are just randomly rolling the sixes and gaining their special abilities, there's a lot of luck in this game, which is going to bother a lot of people, despite the fact the game does play very quickly at 15 minutes. Uh, also, if you're not looking for a filler game, this one definitely falls into the filler game category. Another con I had with the game is that Sometimes the gems look a little bit similar, like the bottom two purple gems, at least for me personally, I get them confused. Also, the yellow gem is definitely orange. It doesn't look very yellow at all. Those are minor quibbles, though, I will say. Uh, because moving on to the pros, I was a big fan of Dig Down Dwarf, and nearly everybody I played with was also a big fan of Dig Down Dwarf, and there's a couple different reasons. First, it does play very quickly. Once you know what you're doing, it's just roll the dice, roll the dice, roll the dice, uh, take what you want, do your things, everybody else draws more gems, and you're going to continue to go. It's a very fast pace game. There's not going to be too many people who are going to have, uh, you know, analysis paralysis in this game. Every once in a while you'll be like, man, should I gamble and spend this gem to try and do that? But other than that, you know, uh, I'm just, what I'm trying to say is it gives you just enough choices to keep you coming back. Another thing I liked about this game was the pace. Like I mentioned, this is a very quick game. This is definitely one of those games that I think when you play it the first time, you're going to be like, whoa, 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 let's do that again. And that's always a good feature when you play it the first time. You're like, hey, I want to try that again. I want to try this strategy or do this. Or maybe I'll focus more on getting my set collection. Or more, focus more on trying to roll my sixes, which is a valid strategy. I've seen somebody do that and just try and focus on their sixes really early on. And at the end of the game, they were just like swap, swap, raid, doing this and that. And, and that is a cool thing that you can do. There are some... Uh, some paths to go off based on there's different ways to try and win the game and I like that I like the choices you get with the gems uh, Component wise very 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 nice components very nice sturdy box the gems all look great as I mentioned aside from the yellow one and the purple ones which confused me just a smidge but it's by no means a deal breaker uh, drawstring bag is very very nice overall this is how you do a Kickstarter game right uh, big thumbs up for grain owned games Dig Down Dwarf, um, if you're looking in the market for a cool little filler game, it fits family, it fits game night, it really is a chameleon in that sense, check it out, I highly recommend it, Dig Down Dwarf, Brain Home Games, two big thumbs up. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below, also in the comment below, let me know what is your favorite filler games, because I love filler games, sometimes we have just have game nights, and we'll just start with a filler game, and we'll do another filler game, and another one, and another one, and we realize, hey, you know what guys, we just played five filler games tonight, and we're like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes that's just okay. So let me know what are some great filler games that you really enjoy down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Dig Down Dwarf. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.